Golden Films has a wonderful track record when it comes to Christmas movies, and it's apparently been five years since I talked about one of those last, so let's destroy the holidays with The Christmas Elves. The Christmas Elves is Golden Films' loose adaptation of the elves and the shoemaker. The original tale of the elves and the shoemaker is pretty basic, really, and was made up of three short stories involving elves. The first story is the one that everyone associates with the title and is what Christmas Elves slightly adapts. Basically, a shoemaker isn't all that great at his job, but then elves start doing it and he becomes successful due to nothing he actually did. The elves were actually nudists, though, and the shoemaker's wife was like, Hey, why don't we make them something to wear so they stop leaving ass prints all over the place? The elves got dressed and said, Hey, let's retire and never come back, so... That was the end of them. That's some real Dobby shit right there, I guess. Ew, clothing, peace out, bitch. The pointlessness of these stories kind of increases as they go along. In the second story, a servant woman is invited by elves to hold a child at its christening and become its godmother. And her masters are like, yeah, guess you'd better go. We don't want to piss off the elves. So she hops the midnight train to Elf Town. The elves show off how rich they are and give her some treasures and ask her to stay a while. After three days of hanging out with the elves, she's like, Yeah, uh, it's been real nice, but I'm gonna be heading back now. So she goes home only to find different people living there now because seven years have actually passed in the normal world. What's the point? I don't know. But my favorite inane story is the third one. A mother's baby gets stolen by elves and replaced with a changeling. Her neighbor then tells her to put the changeling on the hearth and boil some water in two eggshells. And if he left, it'd be all over with him. I think most of us would have a pretty hard time not busting a gut at some water boiling inside an egg shell. I mean, that is some top-notch comedy. The boiling egg water is just as hilarious as the woman's neighbor predicted, so the elves come back and say, Yeah, sorry about the pointlessness. Here's your baby back. The end. But if we're judging the Christmas elves on pointlessness, I guess we could say it really nails the tone of the original tales. This is another annoying Golden Films movie that doesn't credit its actors, so currently the only one listed on the IMDb entry for it is Cam Clark, who is the narrator and the elf Ed. Oh, cram it with your crappy songs, elves. So, get this. This movie is supposedly some yuletide musical fun and brilliantly animated fairy tale magic. You could not be more wrong. We do see some of the important services the Christmas elves provide, like picking up a wreath and stuffing a stocking full of Christmas decorations instead of hanging them up so that anyone could see them. These elves are apparently too horny to really do anything all that useful. As the elves dance around holding hearts and stars over their heads for no reason, we see their magic quick change act as everyone's costume changes color for a few frames. Brilliantly animated. Long ago in the kingdom of Rothenburg, we had drunk cameramen who missed their marks and had a lot of trouble zooming in on a castle. There was a good and generous ruler who was kind. Unfortunately, he died. <laughs> Unfortunately, he died. Well, thank you for adding in some pointless death rate at the beginning of the story, Golden Films. The successor to the throne, King Reinhold, was a far cry from the old monarch. So yeah, King Judge Reinhold was a jerk obsessed with shoes and raised taxes so he could buy more shoes. If this sounds stupid to you, that's only because it is. Speaking of new shoes, I see you've collected the taxes. Uh, well, yes. King Reinhold's droopy dog assistant apparently has a really hard time having smooth animation while writing stuff down in his ledger that already has stuff on the page where he's writing. Brilliantly animated. After last week's taxes, this is all I have left. 
that's all you have left? So, at the tax collectors, the shoemaker says this piece of leather is all he has left, and then hours later at home, his wife is surprised that that's all he had left? I feel like that's a slight disconnect between the intention of the dialogue and how it was animated, which was brilliant, of course. No wonder the shoemaker is having bad luck with his upside-down horseshoes. Ooh, Vittorio, you've outdone yourself! These shoes will look stunning with my gold lame smoking jacket! Oh, ho, ho, ho. oh, how precious! The Shoe Fetish King really is the perfect antagonist for the shoemaker, right? My trustworthy accountant, how do you like my new shoes, eh? Look at his shoes. Uh, you know, Nils, I think you should get yourself some new shoes. King Reinhold's descendants would go on to form wiki feet. <laughs> What is this? Your kingdom is, well, it bankrupt. So King Feet for Brains has bled his kingdom dry by overtaxing them just so he can have the world's dumbest shoe collection. You'd think our shoemaker protagonist should be doing all right in this shoe-based economy, but I guess he really does suck at his job until he gets others to do his work for him. Yeah, I cannot make shoes without money, your highness. I need money, fast. We'll invade someone. Invading another nation over shoe money sounds pretty stupid, but I guess it's not beyond belief. I'm afraid we don't have much of an army left. The national defense budget went into last year's spring shoe line. If he's got, like, no protection left, you'd think the peasants would revolt or another nation would take out the Foot Locker Kingdom. And what about all this extra land and stuff that we're not using? And can't we sell some? So he's just gonna sell his kingdom off piece by piece until he's the old man who lived in a shoe, I guess. Aren't you just loving these brilliant lyrics? Shoes, 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 shoes. I can never have enough shoes! Even though I've only ten tootsies. He says he has ten tootsies, yet we clearly see only four toes on his stinky foot. Maybe Reinhold's left foot has six toes on it. With my elegant royal feet, they can't compare to the shoes and other king's locker! Get it? He's a foot freak who loves shoes! This is apparently some deep character work, so they needed to devote several minutes to this. <laughs> I don't even feel like we should be watching this. I really don't need to see what this freak king gets off to. Shoes. Seven minutes in, and we finally get a proper introduction to the shoemaker Hans. Seriously, we spent almost seven minutes establishing the king as a foot fetish freak. This little brat stole my bread. This is so shocking, we see the edge of the background where they began to stop painting it properly. You know, something we aren't meant to see. Brilliantly animated. Well, somebody's gotta pay for these. I'll be right back. Is that enough? Next time you steal my bread, you'll end up doing time in the dungeon! Don't worry, the elves are gonna replace the shitty chef's child with a changeling, so he learns a real lesson about eggshells or something. You owe me a penny's worth of work. A silver penny? Hans, you idiot. I if I don't steal, my brothers and sisters go hungry. Starting today, You'll work for me. I'll pay you in old pieces of leather. All we have left is one measly piece of leather. And thank heavens, my lucky penny. All we have left is one measly piece of leather. Oh, it's gone! My lucky penny! Oh, nice. Hans stole his wife's keepsake to bail a thief out in order to hire him as help he doesn't really need and can't afford. But don't worry, Hans does precisely jack shit to make this up to his wife. Ugh, I'll just rest my eyes for a minute. Don't be too rough on Hans, guys. He cut a whole circle out of his leather. I mean, that's a pretty good day's work right there. When you wish upon a star, the star will come down and kill you. You must have been up half the night making these shoes. I didn't make any shoes last night. I wouldn't have done anything useful. I was just playing to pay Thief Boy and more of your stuff today. Those shoes in the window, uh, are they for sale? I'll give you 50 marks. <gasps> 75 marks. Well... You drive a hard bargain. 100 marks. You're a mark, you moron. 
Well, I could buy a couple more loaves of ground bread with this. This'll buy enough leather to make a pair of boots. Well, you never made boots before. Yeah, I know. I suck at my job. I guess this shoemaker just has to hang out with King by the Foot at all times. Listen, Nels, I told you to get new shoes. I didn't mean for you to get shoes that were better than mine. Guards, throw them in the dungeon. The King can't even afford unique character designs for his guards at this point, so he really probably shouldn't be jailing his tax collector just because he got new shoes like he told him to. Anyway, now that Hans is branching out into new footwear territory, he really needs to get to work. By which I mean he puts leather out on his table and goes to bed. He didn't even get to cutting out a circle this time. Guess he had to be hoping that magical creatures were showing up to finish his work for him. So the Christmas elves show up and there's a black elf? What woke trash, am I right guys? There can't be black elves! Okay, listen up, sprites. Oh, they're just sprites. Well, that's okay then. There can be different skin colors of sprites. I thought I was watching the Christmas elves, though, not the Christmas sprites! You lied to me! You lied to me! Gorgonzola? What? <laughs> the high hippie sprite elf is cheese! <laughs> Sorry, I was just thinking of water boiling in eggshells. The elf name isn't that funny. Are you here? Am I here? Hmm. Are any of us really here? I know Gorgonzola is supposed to be the one who smoked a few bowls, but Manger Elf must be tripping a bit too to ask if the guy she is currently talking to is there or not. Smoot. Here! Here! <laughs> helping this loser anyway. Because according to our research, Hans is a kind and giving person. I mean, sure, it's his wife's possessions he's giving away, but it's still technically giving. And maybe he'll be the one that will help you sprites get your elf status. So an elf isn't a race, it's just a job title? <laughs> Gorgonzola? You stitch! I'm not at my creative peak. I need motivation. Yeah, I'll give you plenty of motivation. All the best managers threaten their employees. Good work, Sprites. You know, all together, the four of you might make one good elf. So even after they spent all night doing someone else's job, their shitty boss still has to demean them? And so Hans continued his garbage work ethic of cutting shapes out and then calling it a day and hoping that the actual shoemaking would be done by someone else. Hey, how about two pigs for those pumps? And Tommy got a raise. Wow, two cents for only a year's work. Hans is so giving. Is this where you live? Uh, no, I, I was... Uh... Tommy, what are you doing out there in the cold? I was trying to avoid going into my mouthless monster mommy. Brilliantly animated. <laughs> Settle down! Are some of Tommy's brothers and sisters elves too? You're a shoemaker? I asked Santa Claus to bring me a pair of shoes for Christmas. Yes, that's right. None of them have any shoes at all. Even though every shot we saw of them before this had them with footwear on. The peasants are complaining again. They claim they have nothing to eat. Why can't they just eat shoes like me? We caught this scoundrel hunting in your forest. That land was given to my grandfather by the king. I'm taking that land back. Uh, it's going to be sold to, uh, to Mulvania, sire. I thought Droopy Dog Mustache Man was sent to the dungeon. Put him in a dungeon for trespassing on my land. Don't worry. He can't afford any guards to actually watch the dungeon anymore, so it's just a revolving door down there, I guess. Wait a minute. Where did you get those boots? I want to make love to your feet. What the hell kind of story have I wandered into? And their shoes are falling apart. Some of them don't even have shoes. Well, what are you going to do, Hans? Make new shoes for Tommy's whole family? That's a great idea. I'll act like I'm going to make shoes for them, go to sleep, and then someone else will do it for me, and then I'll own Tommy's entire family. The good luck fairies won't like it if you leave them all that work. There is no such thing as good luck fairies. Work just gets done by itself! Somehow! Anyway, the sprites have a new tool to aid them in shoemaking! A skateboard! D what? 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 Zappo! 
So old elf middle manager Shelby accidentally brings Hans with them and then doesn't have enough juice to send him back. So really, she's the biggest screw up out of any of them and she's the one always insulting her team? Where am I? Thanks to my stupidity, you're in Elfland, somewhere no human has ever been. I thought elves lived at the North Pole. Only Christmas elves live at the North Pole. You have to really shine to be selected as one of Santa's elves. Now you mean Santa's slaves. Santa doesn't even pay his workforce? Oh, screw this guy. Hashtag not my Santa. All Santa does is string them along with meaningless titles. Like, first you're a sprite, then you get promoted to an elf, and then a Christmas elf. Where maybe, just maybe, Santa will be good enough to give you clothing that isn't falling apart. That's the Elf Training Center. Can I take a peek? Go around the back so no one can see you. So, of course, Hans walks right up to the front door. In every Christmas stocking, there's a toy we made. The work is so much fun, we think we're overpaid. Ah, so working for Santa is like any real shitty job where they have to keep trying to gaslight you and tell you what a great place this is to work at. But look at this from Santa's point of view, guys. Even he's had to make budget cuts and reuse the same elf design over and over again in several spots so that he can afford his shoe collection. Brilliantly animated! Human in Elfland! I repeat, human in Elfland! Well, I didn't think! Well, that's obvious. You know it's against elf policy to talk to humans? Oh, shut up with the obnoxious background music already! This tends to be an issue with a lot of the Golden Films titles where they blast music that tends to be whatever public domain tracks they happen to have, and they don't even really try to match the tone of the scene. As your punishment, you will be forced to work in the mines! It really is just a never-ending horror working at Santa's sweatshop, isn't it? Because of Shelby and the Sprites, I was able to give shoes to people who needed them. Wow, I never realized that the Sprites helped make you rich. What a great story. I will give you another chance at being elves, but you mess up one more time, and it's off to the mines with all of you. So just the management style at every level in Santa's whole organization is threat-based. Santa's sighting! He's on his way here! I thought no humans have ever come to Elfland. Is this Santa's first time bothering to check out this particular labor camp he owns? Hide the human! If Santa finds him here, we'll all end up in the mines! Santa, you are the worst. Santa, this isn't working! We never get anything that proves Santa isn't a tyrant either, or any kind of reforms in how his fear-based workforce operates. Anyway, they disguise Hans as a hill or something so that Santa doesn't kill them all. That is some water boiling in an eggshell humor for you right there. Four of our lead toy distribution elves have come down with hoof and mouth disease. Of course! And I thought Santa couldn't make his working conditions any worse. And naturally, he's not looking to get them help. No, he's looking to replace them. What about promoting some of those cookie-baking elves? Oh, they're baking their buns off trying to finish up the Christmas cookie order. <laughs> Gotta have those. I love my cookie and milk rest stops. Wait, so the baking elves have to make the cookies that are supposedly left out for Santa just to feed into his bullshit so that he can pretend he's beloved? I guess you better keep them baking, but uh, find me some replacement elves. Uh, I'll do the best I can, Chief. You've done some new landscaping. <laughs> I like it! And Mrs. Claus would, too! Maybe you could landscape it for us this summer. You know, rose garden, and some lovely bushes carved in the shape of reindeer. That's right! I bet you thought you'd get a break this summer! Screw you! You'll work until you die, elf trash! Now, we can't allow you to remember us, so this will seem just like a dream. They had amnesia powder the entire time? They're gonna force people to work in the mines over something that's apparently easily fixed? <gasps> oh, Hans, what's wrong? I'm just wondering why we apparently both sleep in our regular clothing. I dreamed that I was in Elfland. And I just love grabbing my ass. Well, I guess their amnesia powder doesn't work that well. And I really don't want to know why he has that elf girl's clothing in his pocket. 
And I don't want to know how that happened. It looks like they could use some new clothes. We'll make new outfits for them. I have not slept for a week so that I might create the ultimate blue suede shoes for your highness. I am Dracula, the shoemaker. This is Dracula dirt, apparently. I sold the Alps for these! Do you expect me to wear these vile shoes to my Christmas ball? You have a room in the dungeon! Why did the king bother putting his entire kingdom into debt paying for shoes if he can just send everyone to the dungeon without paying? Where did you get these shoes? It was Hans! Hans the Shoemaker, your majesty! I found him! Thanks to you, I can once again have the finest shoes in the land! Hans is apparently the most popular shoemaker in your kingdom, which is constantly shrinking. It shouldn't have been that hard to track him down. As a reward, I will make you a duchess! Well, I'd much rather have a nice big Christmas ham, sir. Yes, obviously I'd rather not raise my status to one where I could get hams all the time. I just love washing the floors too much! Alright, we can work it that way if you want. But she's apparently a duchess the next time we see this woman anyway. King Foot and Mouth then sends his clone army to go find Hans. So, yeah, yeah, you know, brilliantly animated and all that. Anyway, the sprites find the new clothing Hans and wife have made for them, and wow, just look at that difference! They look almost the same! The biggest change really is that the blonde sprite now is a mini dress outfit, which I don't know how great that is for the climate they live in. I'm afraid Big Jack won't let us come back now. Hans remembers us. It's the first rule of elfdom. If a human finds out about you, you have to disappear. And who made that ridiculous rule? It would have had to have been Shithead Santa! Oh, this is really depressing. So depressing that it made me have the wrong voice and my mouth disappeared. Why can't we just zap his memory and make him forget us? Because once a human believes in magic, he always will. What is the point of your amnesia dust then? It seems like every time you would use it, it'd already be too late. I wish Hans could have some of our magic so that he could make beautiful shoes without our help. Yeah, if only Hans was somewhat competent at his job on his own. So they magically transfer some shoemaking skill to Hans. Yes, really. And that apparently proves that they are good enough for the elf promotion. Congratulations, Christmas elves. They were just given new clothing by Hans and then immediately they get changed to different colored versions of those same clothes because apparently that means you're a full elf now. I don't know. You're gonna be Santa's newest elves! Yeah, you mean Santa's slaves. You elves have to get ready for your big night. You're Santa's replacement elves! Yeah, you mean Santa's slaves. Bye Hans. Goodbye Ilsa. I hope you never forget us. <sighs> it was just a dream. Oh! Oh, Hans. That was such an awkward cut there. Okay, bring in Hans the Shoemaker. Oh, come on, which one is Hans? It seems that Hans is a pretty common name in these parts. King Foot Fungus then does what he could have done in the first place and asks the Duchess of Maidsbury which Hans she bought her shoes from. I have a very big order I must fill. I'll never have time to make your shoes. I'm a moron. I assume saying no will be absolutely fine with our tyrannically lower extremity obsessed monarch I order you to fill my order if the shoes aren't finished you'll be spending the rest of your Christmases in the dungeon anyway now I'm super happy to be working on the king's footwear I guess mommy mommy Santa was here look he brought us all shoes that we don't need again anyway Hans just figured he'd fall asleep and his work would get done by others like always but now that the elves are in different colored clothing, they have to wait on another lazy sack of shit instead. So he earns a trip straight to the dungeon with Droopy Mustache Man, who I guess decided to go back to the dungeon? The tension of will Hans get out of jail lasts less than a minute when King Footface releases him because despite giving him actual shoemaking talent, the elves knew Hans was still the same lazy old sleepy shitter and finished the shoes for him like always. 
However, those elves played a boiling ag water level hilarious prank on King Footwarts and cursed his shoes. I want you to, to uh, release all of the prisoners from the dungeon. Release all prisoners from the dungeon. Including me. I can't wait to get out of there. Since he doesn't have his droopy dog voice here, I'm pretty sure that this was meant to be another character, but this was just too brilliantly animated to realize that. I, I don't, I don't want any of my shoes. Give them to the peasants. <laughs> Golden Films apparently forgot to get their voice actors to laugh, so enjoy some creepy low-quality stock laughs. <laughs> what am I saying? <laughs> you elves are the best I've ever had. You're riding with me every Christmas from now on. And by riding with me, I mean holding on for dear life to the end of my sleigh. Ho ho ho, I'm an asshole. Also, while my former Christmas elves are at home sick with their disease, I'm sending them a pink slip. Ho 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 ho. It wasn't until 10 more years that the elves were finally able to get Santa with some cursed boots and overthrow his tyrannical reign. Unfortunately, the damage caused to elf kind was never fully healed. Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays! Seriously though, why did they make Santa so terrible in this movie?